Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you the main interface of Adobe Photoshop 2018 and explain essentially everything you see on screen right now, which is the default essentials layout. Now, there are other windows you can pop open inside of Adobe Photoshop, but for most people getting started out, this is what you're going to be working with and this is what you're going to be seeing. So the first panel over here on the left is called the Tools panel aptly named because everything on this list is a utility that you can interact with your image or photo in some way. So on the left, the tools we're talking about are things like pencil tools, brush tools, erasers, paint buckets, gradients, which is where you shift from one color to another color slowly over a short distance, gradients, which are a gradual blend between colors in a section of your Photoshop document, Selection tools, namely the rectangular marquee tool, and if we right click over here, you can also see elliptical marquee tool. Anytime you have one of these tiny triangles in the bottom right hand corner, you can actually right click it to show more options that are available for you. And almost every item on your this list has one of those corner triangles. So you have a lot of tools over here, a lot more than it might initially look. In later videos, we'll be going into more details about what these tools do and how to use them. At a basic level, you just kind of select a tool, um, you choose the settings up here in the options window, and then you're going to be able to interact with your document in some way. So like, for instance, with the brush tool, we can go up here to the options panel, change the size of the brush, and start drawing on top of whichever layer we have currently selected over here. So the next section is the options window, where whenever you have a tool selected, it's going to give you different options from the size of that tool. Basically, bigger size means it's going to influence a bigger portion of your document. Other options, depending on what tool you have selected, might include changing the type of gradient. So a linear gradient might look like this. But if you go to a radial gradient, you get a completely different result by using it. Now, of course, we're not really going to talk about all of these options in this video, but just know that whenever you have a tool selected and you want to change the options, you do so up here in the Options window. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have the Layers panel, and the Layers panel is really useful because when you're working in a Photoshop document, basically whenever you have Photoshop open, you can separate your work into different layers. So, as I've been making this quick tutorial, we have a few different layers already. So if I actually disable this layer 2, which you can see in the preview window there, shows basically what data this layer contains. But if I hide that, we only get the image, which was the initial Photoshop document behind, uh, because this layer is now disabled, but the original image is still there. So even if we're drawing on top of an image, as long as we do so on a separate layer, it doesn't actually cause any permanent damage to the image behind it. So by using layers, we get way more ability to undo changes that we decide we don't want in BMC. Using layers is going to be one of the most important things to keep in mind as we go forward in these tutorials. You might also notice that there's two more tabs in this layers window, including channels, where by default we're looking at RGB, all of the red, green, and blue color in our image combined. But if we want to see only the areas in our image that actually have red, we can click here. Now it doesn't show it as red, it actually shows it in black and white. But where it's white or lighter colors, that represents there being more red in the image. We can also change it to green channel, where we see only the areas that have green. And blue, where we see only the areas that have blues. The third tab is called paths, which there's nothing in there right now because we haven't done anything with the pen tool. The pen tool can be selected from the tools panel over on the left. And if we click that and we start clicking around on our image, it's going to create what's called a path. Now, paths allow you to do many things, like to cut out part of your image if you wanted to select the area inside of the path. Or you can right click once you've created a path and actually fill it up with a specific color. So here it's selecting contents foreground color, which is going to be the color is selected over here in the tools panel. If we hit OK, that path we just created gets filled up with that color. So there's going to be other ways we can apply the pen tool on paths, but we'll talk about that later on as well. And in the properties panel, we can define certain attributes and properties about 
the layer we have currently selected. So you can see here layer 1 is a text layer indicated by the T here. So if we actually clicked on that, we'd be able to do things like change the font or the font size of the text within that layer. Now, I don't think I've actually defined any text here. Uh, we can do a quick demonstration though. So here I've gone ahead and already created a new text layer. Uh, we can see that it's defined with the text test layer. And if we want to change anything about that, one of the properties, we can go over here and do something like, let's say, choose a new font like Big Noodle Title. Or we could change the font color, possibly over to a deep red. And if we click the advanced button here, we'll get additional settings that we can use to further define our layer. Another panel that pops up with properties is called adjustments. And here, what we can do is we can make changes to an entire layer with one of these tools. So for instance, brightness contrast, we could increase the contrast or the brightness or decrease them inside of our layer. Or we could use Photo Filter to apply a new look to a photo we've imported into Photoshop. So for instance, if we were to apply a Photo Filter to the background layer which contains the image we've imported into Photoshop, then we'll get a different look in the image. And we can increase this effect so that it's very obvious by increasing the density here. And you can see by changing it with a warming filter, the image looks dramatically different, uh, just like the filters you might use in one of your Android or iOS mobile apps. We also have the color panel above properties, which allows us to select colors. Now, we don't have to use this to select colors. We can also just click on the foreground color or the background color down here in the tools panel. And we basically get the same selection tools here as well, just another place to do the same thing. But we also have color swatches, which will contain many of the typical colors you might want to use while you edit some of your PSD files. Um, now, you can actually add in different color swatch palettes into here. That's really all it is. It's a collection of colors. Um, but this is just the one that exists by default. Now, lastly, over on the far right, we have libraries. Because Photoshop 2018 is part of the Creative Cloud package, of course, Photoshop CC for Creative Cloud 2018, you can actually use Adobe's Creative Cloud to manage your files, upload them to the Creative Cloud servers, uh, and to edit files from there, as well as download them to your computer that you're currently working on. Now, this does require you to install the Creative Cloud application, which is optional. But if you have it up and running on your computer, then what you might see here are all of the files that are contained inside of your Photoshop Cloud. So whether you want to store your files up on the cloud or your computer, or to even use a third-party cloud service like Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, it's totally up to you where you want to store your files. So that's the basic interface inside of Photoshop CC 2018. A lot of these tools are going to be the ones we primarily deal with, but there is a lot more hidden complexity inside of Photoshop if you want to take it to the next level and really learn everything that the application can do for you. But for this video, that's going to be it. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future Photoshop content.